The U.S. Supreme Court is taking up Obamacare this week. The question is whether it is constitutional for the government to force every American to purchase health insurance. Speakers at the Defending the American Dream Summit in Milwaukee this past weekend took time to weigh in on the issue. The decision is enormous because the decision basically determines if the Constitution can be interpreted that the government can mandate what you do or do not do in this way, then there's really no limit to, the, to the, what the government can do. So I have a hard time believing that the constitutionality of this will be upheld. And if it is struck down, then the law either goes down entirely, or if this provision is taken out, it will basically collapse under its own weight. So the president's health care law cannot survive without this individual mandate. And we fundamentally believe that this individual mandate is profoundly unconstitutional. And if it would be held up as constitutional, then there's really no limit to what the government can do. Well, it it's, uh, means an awful lot to our future. I mean, it really is, that, that really is a fundamental fight about freedom. And what I've been trying to do is paint a picture for the American people about what our health care system will look like, what our freedoms will look like, what our federal budget would look like if Obamacare is actually fully implemented. And it won't be a pretty picture. I mean, from a standpoint of health care quality, it'll decline. It will lead to rationing. That's why I have an independent payment advisory board. You know, it's really to take a look at outcomes and start rationing care. And the, the medical innovation that uh, Michelle Mockland said, said saved Bill Clinton's life, that saved my daughter's life, that has saved millions of Americans' lives, will be severely limited. And of course, it's, it's, it was so grotesquely under, underestimated in terms of the cost of that. And it's one of, the, one of the things I've really been pushing is the, in particular, the CBO estimate that said only a million people would lose their employer-sponsored care, where you've got McKenzie and Company survey saying 30 to 50 percent of employers plan on dropping coverage. That would, that would be 48 to 80 million people. Of course, that would lead to cost shifting, and then I think Obama would get exactly what he wanted, is basically everybody losing their employer-sponsored care, being dumped into the government-run exchanges. They'd have a de facto single-payer single system. That's, that's the way this thing was really designed. And we, we simply can't afford it. It would add trillions of dollars to our 10-year deficit numbers. Because this individual mandate would not go into effect for three more years, on Monday the court heard arguments whether or not it could even take the issue up right now. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.